Ireland is an island of connected ecosystems. Each one a wonderfully woven web of interdependent plants and animals, which have all evolved together over thousands of years. Just like on land, our rivers, lakes and wetlands contain a rich bounty of biodiversity, intricate webs of life that need to be treasured. From invertebrates on the riverbed to plants along the shore, each and every species has its own unique role in this delicate balancing act. There's a really rich insect life here, and that means there's a great population of fish. So many different plants and animals. Between that and the fish and the spectacular scenery, it's the most gorgeous place. Our welfare depends on a healthy natural environment and the services it provides. Clean water, clean air, and all the materials and foods that sustain us. But what happens when a species is lost from an ecosystem? Or when a totally new and non-native species is introduced? Can just one new arrival trigger a cascade of changes that cause other things to die out? In this episode, I want to find out more about some of the new plants and animals that are taking hold in our rivers and lakes, what kind of damage they're doing, and what we can do to stop them. My journey begins here on Loch Corrib, Ireland's second largest lake. It's a stunningly beautiful place with hundreds of secluded islands and a wonderful tapestry of habitats. But there's a problem here. An invasive plant has taken hold and it's wiping out the native plants and animals in the lake. It's even affecting the fish that make this lake a valuable tourist destination. I asked Joe Caffrey to explain to me why this plant is such a problem and what Inland Fisheries Ireland is doing about it. The invasive species were clearly adversely impacting not only on the fish but also on the habitat and then on the angling, anglers' access to our watercourses. So they had to be dealt with. And these are species that I assume are not a problem in their home territory. It's just when they, when they get here, they become a problem. Why is that the case? These are species that have arrived in Ireland without their complement of pathogens. So they can grow exponentially and there's nothing to bring them down. Here in Loch Carb, there's several quite dangerous invasive species. Yeah, we have plant from South Africa. Um, a plant with a long name called Lagerosiphon, curly leaved waterweed. This is a species we didn't want in Ireland. We knew it was in a number of ponds having been brought in by horticulturalists as an oxygenating weed for artificial ponds. We'd never seen it in the wild. So as soon as I so spotted what it was, I was in a car and down here that same day, went out to one of the bays, not that far from where we are on the lake here, just north of Uchterard and was blown away by what I saw. We had a, a bay, one of many, many good angling bays on this very large lake, and uh, I was barely able to see water. It, it blew me away, and I realised there and then we had a big problem. And you're, you're now dealing with that invasive still 12 years on. Will you bring me out to see some of it? Absolutely, I'm most certainly be more than happy to. What have we got here then? It's interesting that we have actually we've two species here. We have carophyte or stonewort 
This is what made Loch Corrib the, the very famous royal brown trout fishery that it is. Why so? It's, it's a weed. You can see how complex the structure of the vegetation is. And as a result of that complex structure, it harbors very large numbers of insects. So this is native and it's got all these wee snails. This is a it's native. Got loads of bugs in it. Insects that the trout particularly like to feed on. Now, you have something else here. This is the culprit. Is it? This is Lagrosiphon major or curly leafed waterweed. This is the invasive species. A fragment that size or even smaller yeah. is what propagates this species. Plant breaks under the influence of wind, fragments float off, and after two or three days, water gets into the stems, they saturate, and they simply sink onto our native species, it will then grow vertically rapidly for the surface, where they can create a very dense canopy layer. They will exclude all of the light from this submerged vegetation. Submerged vegetation needs light. If it gets no light, it dies. That's how Lagrosiphon achieves the success for it that it does. Amazing uh, that it's just so quick and so aggressive. Effectively, what we're trying to do is to block light from the lagrosiphon. The lagrosiphon has blocked light from our native species and killed them because of no, there's no photosynthesis going on. We're trying to get it back. We're now laying jute matting to exclude natural light from the lagrosiphon. The jute mat has been cut to size already. The divers are making sure it goes into the right location and they also make sure that as it sinks, it goes down flat and covers all of the vegetation they need. Is this a couple of days a week or this is... This is six months' work per year. Six months, this so you've got a team months. out here every day. Absolutely, this, this, yes, and, and you have to do that. A huge amount of effort goes into controlling this. What would happen if somebody said tomorrow, sorry, no more budget to do this, we're, we're just going to have to leave this? Effectively, the lake would be devastated. Angling would cease on this lake, navigation would cease on the lake. Mm -hmm.